years ago, I was asked to consult with a startup that was in trouble. They had invested a good bit of money in a wonderful piece of technology that was designed to analyze for the first time the success of a sales training program. Up until the creation of their piece of software, the algorithm that was captured in their piece of software, up until then, sales training programs were evaluated in really very primitive and really, quite frankly, ineffective fashion. One way that you would evaluate a sales training program is you would ask it, you know, let's presume that 30 people in your company have been in a sales training program for the last week, and it's Friday now and the program is over. The way that most people evaluate that sales training program is you hand a sheet of paper to those folks and you ask them to say, was this a good program? And of course, when it's in-house training, you're going to say it was a good program. The other way that they evaluate sales training programs is that they look at results. That initially sounds like that would make a lot of sense, like that might be the very best way to evaluate a sales training program, but think of all the variables that can affect the sales after the sales training program took place. Maybe the competition has cut prices. Maybe the competition has increased prices. Maybe the competition has come out with a new product. Maybe they've increased their advertising budget. There's all of these variables that would have also a profound impact on, on actual sales. And so that's not an effective way to measure the effectiveness of a sales training program. My client had come up with a software program that could measure all of the variables and make a specific determination about whether or not this had been a successful sales training effort or not. And better still, it could profile who within the, the universe of people that had engaged in the sales training were, were helped the most. So that the organization could make sure that all the people who were helped the most would be the very next people that you would get into the sales training program. They tested this algorithm with and the, and the software package with a number of major companies, Pioneer Seed Division of DuPont, uh, Sprint Technical Services, uh, a couple of others, and in each and every case, the folks were very satisfied with the results, felt that in fact it had given them a very accurate picture of the success of the sales training program, had given them a very accurate picture of which subset, which cohorts should take the sales training program. Yet, the company after about 12 months had failed to sell a single software package, a very reasonably priced software package. It cost about $15,000 to administer the software package against what could presumably be for large corporations a multi-million dollar sales training budget. So think of the small percentage of improvement that you would have to make in a large sales training budget to get a great return on your investment of that $15,000 of cost yet they were not able to sell a single software package. So the, the CEO of this stressed startup, this at-risk startup, asked me to come in. I'd develop a little bit of a reputation as the guy that could build a story. And he asked me to come in and help them create their story. And after listening to their story, I quickly determined that they had a great story. It was a marvelous story. They knew exactly the right story to tell about the power, the value of their product, so then we wondered what we would do next, and it struck me, well, that there's a chance that I can learn something new by calling a half a dozen or so VPs of sales and just explaining what the product was all about, explaining what the value proposition was all about, and listen to them, and maybe I'd get some fresh insight, and maybe there'd be some room to improve the story, but I wasn't promising anything because, again, I thought they had a good story. So I did that. I made about a half a dozen phone calls to VPs of sales at large corporations and what I discovered pretty quickly was that they needed this technology but they didn't desire it and here's why they didn't desire it. These were folks who had been VPs of sales for their corporations for a number of years and over those number of years they had spent millions and millions and millions of dollars in sales training and nobody up until then could ever declare whether or not this was a good investment or not. And now along comes a company that was going to evaluate their sales training investment with such precision that the whole organization would know now whether or not these years of investment in sales training had been smart investments by, on behalf of the CEO or, or on behalf of the VP of sales or not. And they didn't want to have that scrutiny. They didn't want to have that analysis. They needed the product that would certainly help them significantly in the management of their sales training effort, 
but they didn't desire it. They didn't want it. So I came back to the client and I explained what I had found. I found that, yes indeed, we're telling the right story, but we're telling it to the wrong audience. We contemplated it, we considered it for a while, and we wondered, okay, who within the corporate office would be interested in a program that would give the kind of ROI analysis that my client's software package would give to this really very large investment. And of course we concluded that who that was was the CFO, the Chief Financial Officer, whose job it is to do all that he can or she can to evaluate all of the business's investments across the range of activities that the company's engaged in. So once again I got back to the phone, I found a half a dozen or so either CFOs or, or, or next in command to CFOs who would get on the phone with me. I explained what the proposition was all about. I explained what the product could do. And we found strong, strong interest from these CFOs for the use of this product. Based on that, we were able to reconstruct an investor presentation and, and declare that we had now figured out what was going on with this business, that the right audience for their story was the CFO's office. They were able to raise additional money. They were able to prove out their concept. They were uh, soon acquired by a larger company. And I was taught the lesson again, that it's not enough to have the right story. You sure want to make sure that, that story is anchored in the right audience, the audience that is going to see the story as the fulfillment of their needs and their desires both. Uh, and that a story that's going to be so important to them that they will want it to be true. Make sure you know who your audience is.